And so I thought we could start actually having some presentations again now that we're getting, we're not completely through our backlog of lots of things to do in the repo, um, but we're getting there. Um, so we'll have a working session today and then um, I added to the agenda that we could talk about things coming up, including um, back at KubeCon, let's volunteer to give a presentation about his use case. So. Um, so we'll talk about that and other things. Um, so yeah, and during the um, the introductions, feel free to add um, suggested agenda items if you have, you know, a proposal you um, want to talk about or um, things that uh, you think should be on our agenda. Either this when we'll carry over um, things to to future meetings. So first off, I'm Sarah Allen. Welcome to Sig Security. Um, weekly meeting, uh, and I am one of the co-chairs. And then I will tag the next person. I'll, I'll just say the people as we go down the list in attendance, and then and tag each of you. So Jonathan Meadows. Oh, and then oh, wait a second. We're supposed to check in about what we've been doing in security land, um, which I should say that I um, um, I attended a, the the uh, user group of the financial services and shared a bit about what we've been doing. And, um, and you know, maybe Jonathan can share a little bit about that group. And um, also been doing a bunch of GitHub stuff that is now on the agenda. So that's my check-in. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, so Jonathan Meadows, um, and this week I chaired the financial services user group. Um, which uh, Sarah uh, graciously attended and gave us an insight into the security SIG group um, and part of the work that uh, we also discussed during the, the meeting there and I've certainly been doing this week has been updating the threat modeling work that we've been doing and are working to open source, uh, tidying it up, adding feedback and comments that I've had from people um, and that's, uh, that's looking like it's in good shape. Also, um, Tending to the Kubernetes security training system that we're looking at open sourcing uh, in the next week or two, I'd say. It's me. Great, Dan. Hi, everybody. Dan Shaw, one of the co chairs. Um, been really busy and kind of bogged down the last few weeks. Uh, you know, one and uh, um, had a, a really great working session with. Uh, Sarah and JJ uh, last night, and uh, it's great to get get caught up, and uh, um, I'm happy to see uh, everybody. Peter. Yeah, Peter Benjamin here, uh, second time attending SIG Security, um, and uh, when you, uh, good question, Sarah. When you say uh, update on what we've been doing in security land, is that just like uh, within the uh, scope of SIG security or? Well, just like we share, like I read this interesting article, I went to a conference, my completely unrelated group that, I mean, my non directly related group that does something on security did something interesting last week. So it can be any oh, kind sure, of sure. check in. Um, um, and sometimes people share things that are going on in your life. I was on vacation. Hawaii was great. That's okay, too. Uh, all right. Um, well, uh, in my day job, I'm actually um, a uh, security, um, I provide security subject matter expertise uh, around Kubernetes uh, and uh, the CNCF uh, in general here uh, at work. And so uh, what I've been doing lately is actually to kind of uh, meet um, some security requirements internally. I've been working on a Kubernetes uh, threat model following Microsoft's stride methodology that I was actually thinking about open sourcing and contributing. So that's great. And I think yeah. the um, the Kubernetes team is actually working on something something like that. Um, and maybe we can somebody can search back in the notes and share. Or were you here? I think it was a few weeks ago that somebody chimed in and shared what they were working on. Somebody from the docs team. So I, I Jonathan? Think, yeah, I, um, obviously we're working on a threat model that we're open sourcing shortly. Uh, and it'd be great to uh, discuss that with you, Peter. In addition, um, the Trail of Bits team, as part of their audit, is I believe um, creating a threat model of Kubernetes. So there's a couple mm. of Kubernetes threat models now. It'd be good to collate the data together. 
and awesome. yeah, I'd love to contribute where where possible. Yeah, that would be great if we could get you know people kind of combining yeah. into a holistic exactly. one. Yep. Super. Um, Carlos. Hey guys. Uh, well, I'm. My name is Carlos Vicencio. I'm working to, uh, at Intel, uh, trying to select uh, basically two projects that we are developing here at Intel in order to, uh, well, basically uh, send it uh, back to the CMF uh, meeting board in order to do the security assessment over those projects. And these projects will be tied to the uh, Kubernetes infrastructure, so I will just need to talk with a couple of uh, managers and general managers here in Intel in order to receive the people and I will post the name of those two projects. And that's pretty much all that I do the, late, the last week. All right. Thank you, Carlos. Lutz. Hello, my name is Lutz Behnke. I work for Figo, which is a German fintech. Um, I'm basically here to learn and to listen. Um, and Sarah, would you be so kind to, to just quickly outline the difference between a meeting and a working session? Um, well, yeah, you've been here since KubeCon when all we've had is working sessions. Um, working sessions are more, um, are sort of less formal and we have discussions about how we're going to approach different things, right? So they tend to be, like last time we talked all about Six Security Day, right? Just like, let's do some planning for what we're gonna do that KubeCon. It tends to be more, lots of small things, right? That we're wrangling or discussing or coordinating. Um, and somebody brings a problem to the group that is more like the work of the group kind of problem. And then um, the meetings are scheduled, like we'll have a presentation or, you know, a, a facilitated discussion or something where somebody prepares what's going to happen at that meeting. And we, we you know, like sort of had this idea that we would get into a, as the group grows, we might get into a rhythm of having larger meetings, right? Where it's more of a um, listening in and fewer people talking, but it would be a format that would work for a larger group. And then just the people who are really active on specific projects going on right now would be at a working session. Um, and so people could decide to come to one or the other or both, or maybe they would come to working sessions when they need feedback on their project, but not otherwise or something, something. Um, so we're, um, we're just kind of, and also I think generally like Dan and JJ and I thought like it would be nice to have a rhythm where there's sometimes stuff that is just sort of generally educational and other stuff that is more active. Um, but we haven't quite gotten into a rhythm now that we've had this, um, you know, we've had, uh, we've kind of in the last four or five months, we've spawned the security assessment project, which kind of is its own ongoing project. So we may end up having working sessions that are different, like, you know, at different times, like the, we have a breakout of the, the policy working group um, that meets in the afternoon. So. Is that, I don't know if that helps. Yeah, that, that thanks, that answers my question. I uh, have to uh, pick up on the meeting of uh, last week because I dropped out with uh, crappy internet, so I uh, still have to catch up with the uh, recording. Yeah, although that was mostly talking about what was gonna happen on SIG Security Day. So um, hopefully we will get uh, plans echoed back on that. Um, and we have a... I think folks are not here who are working on that. And then I see Lakshmi on the participants list. Do you have audio? Yeah, can you hear me? Now I can. Hi. Hi, do you want to give a little okay. introduction? Uh, hi. I'm Lakshmi. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, I'm a uh, automation, security automation engineer. My name is Lakshmi Velicheti. Uh, I work at uh, Shape Security. Uh, so my main role is to like, uh, automate things, like develop infra, uh, develop services, uh, more, which are more security oriented. So uh, I heard about this uh, group 
in my company Slack channel. So that's how I came to know about it. And uh, I'm here to learn and contribute to open source, uh, to whatever you're doing. Yeah. Great. It's great to have you. Good first yeah. meeting because we'll be talking about how we work a little bit. Ah, cool. Perfect. Uh, welcome. Thank you. So I think I've got everybody. Um, now and then, um, so we wanted to do a little bit of planning. Falco's not here, it seems. Um, so they are deciding upon, um, I haven't seen their actual security review kick off because I think we're trying to, we're very, very close to wrapping in Toto and OPA and then we'll be kicking off the next security review. We're trying to only do one at a time um, because we're kind of, I, I think, in general, we'd like to only do one at a time, but um, but particularly while you know we're just on our we're going to be doing our third. Um, so um, since I haven't seen their document come in, I think they um, we haven't you know the next thing would be to schedule the assessment, the presentation. Um, and so I wanted to ask Lutz if you wanted to pick a date that if you're still up for doing this presentation we wrote up at KubeCon. Yeah, um, well, um, I'm, I can pick a date. I haven't written up anything in particular. Um, I, because I've ma mainly been struggling with the question of what would be interesting to the group. Um, as far as I've been seeing with when I uh, attended meetings, it's just that I would just list uh, things of, yes, we do that too, or yes, we plan to do that. Um, and um, I'm doubtful what format I should use to, to offer some useful information to the group. Um, um, so let me just, you know, maybe actually Dan facilitated a number of these. Maybe Dan, you could speak to this a little bit and I'll look for some slides that I found particularly useful. Great, yeah. Um, you know, as we've seen with, uh, you know, the threat modeling discussions, um, you know, by having a share out of, uh, you know, our, our particular context, the challenges that we're dealing with, um, you know, we're, we've been able to, um, to gain insights, uh, you know, Sir was just, uh, uh, you know, opening up this attribute based um, permissioning. Uh, so, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, really interesting to see the um, the outcome of years of you know uh, you know trying other approaches and uh, you know explore how we how uh, uh, ADP ended up uh, with this model. Um, so and and that helps us in uh, you know draw um, more concrete evidence uh as we're we're building the you know threat models and and helping uh you know define the uh uh you know security and access control um in the cloud native ecosystem yeah so what i recall of this and you can listen to the recording is like that this this kind of like boxes and arrows thing like these are my components and these are how they're hooked up together and this is what you know i worry about and you know it could be something this is more, um, di you know, this is more diagrammed in the abstract. And then um, uh, I recall Cloud Foundry did something that was much more, the slides aren't here, but it was much more specific. It was like, you know, this is how, you know, everything had the name of the specific component that it was and how they were connected to each other. Um, so I think it would be like, you know, and, you know, it, and it sort of, it depends on what you want to get feedback on. Right, so um, I think generally it's helpful to me to see, you know, like what feeds into, you know, something that's either a data flow type of diagram, right? Or, um, or some kind of um, something that shows like, you know, access or, you know, maybe it's, a, it's a how your, um, how your software is created and deployed or whatever it is that, you um whatever aspect you want to kind of share about your use case but i think um, yeah um uh, most of the th things you just listed were were things were um ideas i had in in uh, barcelona to to talk about but um a lot of the um, the things were then covered by um discussions 
in in the group about um, this comp component doing that and and yes we we use or we we try to uh, or plan to use um, all of the above all of the usual suspects um, so that's probably not as interesting um, but you you just said something that I I think I can um, I would like to share is which is our effort to um, remove the admin from the cluster and and automate fully um so this is um this is something that i could talk about um b because we have had some obstacles to doing that and uh, teaching people not to assume um to have the ability to port forward or um or exec is something that we've been working hard on but uh, there are also technical problems in um uh, how how you deploy certain components and what uh, are expected of admins to to run just things like uh, Elex Elasticsearch, which cannot be run in a declar declarative manner out of the box. So okay, that's the uh, yeah. I got ideas what I'd like to talk about. Great. As as for a, a date. Um, I'm one of the uh, lucky per people that get three weeks of holidays, so um, I'll probably be available only by. And we could also put it in August. It doesn't have to be July. Yeah. Like, if you uh, want to. The end of August. What's what's. Uh, more or less the end of August, I'd say. Okay. Uh, Do you want to? Anybody can. Um, let me find a. Does anybody have a calendar up and handy? Dan? What, what are we looking for? The the, the dates date. after July 24th. So ah, we... uh, that is the third. No, that was, so what would be the end of August? So if we were going to see. Ah, uh -huh. Sorry. So July. End of August is Wednesday the 28th. that sound good to you Lutz or do you I mean you can confirm later we can say tentative. Yeah, let me put it uh, tentatively on the 14th August the 14th I think that's uh, that's okay. something I could do I just checked my calendar um, but uh, I'll, I'll check uh, a number of other things and get back to you okay super and um, so we'll call this Um, and then we'll fill in those dates in a bit. Super, thank you so much. We'll just do this TBD. So then um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we've been working on in roles. So for a while now, we've had like kind of ad hoc conversations about, you know, this triage role that Brendan's taken on and he's in, out, he's in China at KubeCon. Um, and then we've had a lot of conversations about the security reviewer roles. And I had thought that we could, um, we were trying to use this triage role in GitHub that I thought would allow us to um, actually like have people take on issue wrangling sort of roles. It turns out that that's not really possible. So, um, so not only is it a good idea to actually define these roles, but I also wanted to kind of go over with the group kind of mechanically what we're doing, which is we kind of have to give everybody right access to the repo, which is okay, because we all trust each other, but we want to establish roles where people who are relatively new to the group, you know, could take on a role where they're helping out and doing things and we don't have to like, you know, sign in blood or whatever. It's just GitHub. We have, um, you know, we have redundancy and if somebody makes a mistake we can always fix it because we have version control. Um, so basically what I've done is kind of written up um, more detail in this file which is what actually does the permissions. So this is this settings.yaml which is and actually might be more useful to go um, and talk about the uh, the actual governance roles first. So we um, have 
the charter that was approved by the CNCF had the chairs, the technical leads, and we also included the project leads because our process has this notion of having a proposal. And then when that proposal has gotten feedback and it's accepted by the group, then well, it'll become a project. And that project lead may, you know, it's, it's a role that we have defined and um, we wanted to have that kind of documented in Surface so that people could feel like, oh, I want this is how things get done. Um, it's not some special in club. If you want to get something done um, and contribute that our projects are generally prioritized, um, you know, they're in, are the priority is influenced by the TOC, but nothing get, happens without some member of the group doing it. So um, if it doesn't have a volunteer to do it, then it's not likely to get prioritized. And so we want to acknowledge these project leads. And so that was there before. And then, um, which is not a role that is appointed by the TOC or anything. It's just um, our group decides what we're going to work on and people volunteer and we do that. So in that same spirit, we have a number of facilitation roles. So Justin Capos has volunteered to be the security assessment facilitator. And so um, Dan and I wrote this up, which is, you know, kind of based on what he's been doing, um, where he's coordinating, you know, the queuing up of the assessments, who's ready to, you know, who's interested and ready and, you know, um, and prioritize if needed, if there's ends up being a big queue, um, he'll talk to um, us chairs and if we need, we'll touch base with our TOC liaisons. But mostly we, um, we're just kind of getting through establishing the process right now. But then what we've done is we have a whole, we have a directory, the assessments directory, and now we're saying, okay, if, if something's in that directory and it's just a clarification or like, you know, moving documents around, Justin Capos can accept those PRs and do that and manage issues and do everything with assessments. And then we trust him that if it's like a change in policy, if he's actually changing the process, he'll, flag one of the co-chairs and we will chime in and, and, um, and review things. So, um, so that, um, so that's a, you know, kind of a documented role. And then um, what I did was um, I also linked in right now, we only have really one project team with special roles, which is the security reviewers. And so um, I merged in, so now we have one PR with all these things. So the security reviewer role was written up a while ago. And so what I've done here is I've just kind of, um, or Dan wrote up, which is the security reviewers are really this whole thing is so that we can assign issues to them. <laughs> In order to assign issues to anybody, they need to have right access to the repo, which is kind of nutty, um, but it is the way it is. And um, so what we thought was like, oh, well, should they be able to also merge PRs? And we, we actually went through the Intoto summary and it turns out that that assessment also comes with recommendations to the TOC. So based on that, we thought, okay, well, there should be a, a co-chair who reviews before merging, but if everybody's reviewed, we trust that person to, you know, like hit the button <laughs> and do the merge. So we're, what we're working on doing is expanding the footprint of the people who are just going to do the administrative work and who we trust to like have stuff written down and follow the policies. So, um, so that's the security, that's the security assessment team. And then we have a triage team where um, Howard and um, Brandon have been working on helping to triage issues. Brandon's kind of done the lion share of the miscellaneous issues and getting them tagged and whatnot. And so the idea is that we have a team, we created a um, Slack channel, which anyone is invited to join. Um, it's great to have additional people. Um, Robert, who's not here today, has been great in chiming into just a bunch of issues to just read the issues and provide meaningful feedback because sometimes if there's a few voices in there, it's much easier to make a call and move on to the next step. So sometimes, sometimes it's not controversial. It's just that, you know, one of us who's looking at the issue doesn't necessarily, you know, know what the, you know, whether this is something that is just my opinion or everybody's opinion, you know, and, and maybe it doesn't merit a whole discussion if we can have a few people 
look at it asynchronously. It's also really nice for people in other time zones where this time isn't super convenient for them to have activity that happens outside of this meeting. So, um, so the idea is that um, anybody's welcome and um, it would be nice if there were, you know, five to 10 people who were on this SIG security triage group who are like on the list who participated. And then we wanna probably keep the group that is actually adding the labels and doing any editing small. Um, right now there's just um, Brandon and Howard and then of course the us co-chairs help. Um, but then the idea is that anybody who's on this triage team could invite somebody else who's active um, or ask for a volunteer if they're feeling overwhelmed or um, like they want more help. And then it's a role that people can take on that's pretty high value to keep us moving through getting things done. Um, so are there, I, there are questions about how this all works. Does it make sense? Suggestions? Is anyone inspired to uh, uh, participate? <laughs> does, that, does that look uh, uh, interesting and, and uh, uh, engaging? It absolutely, it, it absolutely does. I'm just trying to figure out um, where, where to add the, the most value. Uh, so I, sure. I, I think go and, uh, it, I don't know, Sarah, if you wouldn't mind posting the, oh, someone else has posted the link, but if you could post a link to that GitHub, uh, I think it'd be useful to add to the minutes and uh, people can reflect on it and figure out where they can add that value. Right. Great. Um, so yeah, and then what, what I'm trying to do is as people kind of start doing things and as it, you know, like, I think having these roles makes it, um, so somebody put this PR in the minutes. Um, oh, it's right here. And then I think our repo should be at the top here. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So, uh, sir, if I can uh, chime in. Uh, yeah, the one thing that we didn't formalize uh, in this is how we uh, can best attribute uh, your work and effort to uh, this SIG, uh, to the broader community, and uh, you know, eventually, um, you know, to your employer. So, if um, if there's something that we can, uh, you know, do ex with explicit recognition, uh, or you know, if there are any other uh, needs or concerns that you have around that, uh, you know, we we'd love your input in that, so we can. Uh, you know, refine that process. Uh, so, uh, you know, everyone who's participating, you know, feels like they, um, you know, first and foremost know, you know, what to do and, and how to add value. Uh, and uh, everybody's, uh, everybody who's, who's uh, contributing at that level, uh, you know, gets the recognition that they need uh, both here and, um, you know, and can carry back, that back into their, um, you know, day jobs and the, the rest of their efforts. Yeah, this is not considered to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that this was, you know, necessarily good enough. The YAML, uh, the the YAML file going going and, and telling the pointy header haired, headed uh, boss to uh, you know look at a YAML file uh, <laughs> might might be a little bit too much. Um, but yeah, so I think we want to. Um, we're trying to balance the like. Yeah, people need to be, people are spending work time on this. And so we want to make sure that people who are doing the work are acknowledged. Um, yet, you know, we don't expect that, like certainly right now, it's not high glory work, but you know, you get some amount of acknowledgement and prestige from your fellow security experts. Um, but uh, the, um, we do have, you know, like we, we, have talked about like, well, maybe we would organize our member list so that people, you know, that teams aren't illustrated. That also I think helps for people who are new. It's just kind of a very long list of strangers where, you know, we might have seven or 15 people on any one call. And um, I think breaking it up into teams would make it easier for people to know um, who's doing what and how they can scrub in, like Jonathan was saying. Yeah, I think that'd be really useful if, uh, if it was split up into different teams or different um, focus areas. Uh, so that if people have got a question or a, 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 something of interest, they know who to reach out to, that would be great. 
Um, so, so we'll kind of take that into account. So, um, so that was the big things on my agenda. And um, we can, I don't know if anybody has anything they want to raise or we can um, take a look at the um, issue list. And I don't know if anybody who's here has a proposal listed. Dan, was there anything other um, that you felt that we should get feedback from the group? That we went and reviewed uh, yesterday? Right. <clears throat> We're, you know, the, the history of things, you know, really just bookkeeping. Um, Although I think the roadmap might be good to sort of highlight to people. We did a little work here um, where of JJ putting the completed milestones in here, which we kind of pulled from um, JJ and I did some work prepping for KubeCon EU and did a little timeline. And so this is kind of another way that we can acknowledge people by highlighting significant like PRs where people landed. We actually finished a roadmap item um, or major accomplishment that was a team effort to have, um, you know, kind of a record of when those happen and then the links kind of show, um, you know, the, the folks who are involved. And then, um, and then the idea being that as we, that the future roadmap that we're working on wrangling all these issues for now, like becomes a list of proposals um, rather than this, uh, you know, this was a, a suitable roadmap when the group was first forming, um, but now we have more specifics that we can highlight. The, the other thing, you know, it kind of riffs on the uh, the roles uh, discussion. Um, you know, in our list of members that we maintain, um, you know, the norm is having uh, you know attribution uh, and uh, of the, you know the company that you're uh, involved in. Um, so you know, one individual who didn't have that, um, you know, was um, you know, I asked them to, 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 um, to add that information. Um, it's not a, you know, a hard, uh, concern. Um, you know, and, and there are some individuals who have explicitly, um, you know, uh, indicated that they are operating as individuals and not on behalf of their company. Uh, so in, in that case, um, you know, it's to totally fine that, that, you know, not having that, um, but, you know, especially if you're a vendor, uh, and, uh, you know, participating, you know, that, that, that context I think is, uh, especially useful. Um, you know, so, so we're, um, you know, just man managing through that and understanding that, you know, you, you have your, your, your vendor interest and you can, um, you know, uh, uh, uh you know, identify whether you're, which hat you're wearing, uh, you know, as you're, uh, as you're speaking, representing yourself. Great. So, um, so we, if we don't have uh, anything on the agenda, we could um, wrap early. That sounds good. Uh, a good question. Please. Yes. So how do, uh, uh, I mean, what is the usual process for new members? Can we just go around, look at the issues and see what we're interested in, reach out to people or uh, I, I guess that, is that it? Or is there any process that you have in mind? Maybe we need to get used to, we need to uh, read some documentation or some things first, even before jumping in on anything, uh, which would make sense to me. So I was just wondering, uh, if we need to go through some material before uh, or just reach out to people uh, on things you're interested in? So I think chiming in on issues, like reading, um, reviewing PRs and chiming in on issues is a good way to kind of get a sense of what's going on in the group. There's a tends to be a lot of chatter on Slack more okay. than the email list. Um, so that's like kind of also a good way to, that tends to be less like some, it's, it's, it's like a chat 
thing. Yeah. Like sometimes it's a little topical. Yeah. Um, okay. And then um, before you do a, like a, if you want to actually make a change or, or propose a PR, um, then like I think reading the contributing guide, but this is very like pretty basic, right? Like this is yeah. like a writing style and so forth. Um, yeah. But I think it's, um, <laughs> To, to read about whether whatever area you're interested in, see if there are you know issues that cover it, or you know poke around the repo um, okay. to kind of get a sense of what's going on, and you know chiming in on issues where um, right now there um, you know the labels are sort of helpful because you can be like oh I'm interested in security assessments and see all of these things. It's um, it's harder to get a sense of like which things are important um, right now because we're still like kind of gathering these things. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think that for where, for the stage we are now, reading stuff in the repo, looking at issues and coming to meetings is a good way to come up to speed. And then I think would love have your feedback as a new member about like what would be a good way in, like a better way in. And are there some improvements yeah, that sure. we can make to, Sorry, no. sorry, I was just thinking because I, I had a similar sort of feedback. I just think it would be useful to have like a, a new member's um, page or something like that, a collection of suggestions, effectively just what we've had, um, which is great. You know, it's valuable value to try to contribute. Great, and, and you know, I, I I would you know, in terms of you know, following the norms, uh, you know, there's at least a couple meetings that you you know would attend. Uh, you know, that's something that uh, in in terms of you know, basically landing the PR, uh, you know, I, I go back through and look at uh, attendance uh, to validate that an individual has actually uh, shown up first. Okay. So, um, so I will demonstrate how we do suggestions. Maybe like, probably not even two hours, like, uh, maybe like it's an hour of writing initial PR. I could definitely comment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could write the initial PR description. Um, get people doing stuff sooner. Okay, so then um, I'm going to submit this as a new issue. It's a suggestion. So we, these issue templates, I think, really helped a lot um, because they kind of give you these prompts. And then I'm going to make this a help wanted. So that's another tip. Mm, <laughs> the I help see. wanted tags are like probably anyone could just pick this up. Okay. Um, you know, like. And then I think like sometimes um, I had one with a help wanted tag and somebody was like, I don't know what to do here. Right. And then it prompted me to write some more stuff. So okay. like even questions about like, this isn't enough information for help wanted or notes in this meeting or whatever. And it's super helpful to just, you know, like go in and do little PRs where like, Oh, this would be a good link. Um, because we're, we're, um, Things are a lot better than they were a month ago, but we're still a little bit of like getting the repo in shape. Um, yeah, kind of where we are. I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Yeah, you can take a look. Fabulous. Thank you. All right then. So um, yeah, join us on Slack. Join the mailing list. Um, ask questions, and um, we'll wrap for today. And um, see y'all next week. Thanks, sir. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.